Planning of the Standard ISO 9001-2015 Planning is the process of conceptualizing the activities required to achieve a desired goal. It is the first and foremost activity for any new project or task that you want to accomplish. Planning involves thinking about the risks that may occur in future and addressing these through adequate control measures. Clause 6 of ISO 9001 deals with this highly critical activity and requires an organization to take a risk-based approach and plan for the uncertainties, proactively preventing undesired effects. Another aspect of planning is to identify objectives which can be used to monitor and track our progress. Additionally, this clause requires an organization to plan for changes and follow a structured approach for any changes required in the management system. Clause 6. Planning brings risk-based thinking to the front. Once the organization has highlighted risks and opportunities in Clause 4, it needs to stipulate how these will be addressed through planning. The planning phase looks at what, who, how, and when these risks must be addressed. This proactive approach replaces preventative action and reduces the need for corrective actions later on. Particular focus is also placed on the objectives of the management system. These should be measurable, monitored, communicated, aligned to the policy of the management system and updated when needed. After much deliberation, the decision to make risk explicit has been made. Here it is in Clause 6. Having highlighted the issues and requirements in Clause 4, now it is time to address the risks and opportunities the organization faces through planning. How will the organization prevent or reduce undesired effects? How will the organization ensure that it can achieve its intended outcomes and continual improvement? It will do it here in planning. Planning will address what, who, how and when. Not difficult. This proactive approach is easier to understand than preventive action and should reduce the need for correction and corrective action at a later date. The requirements around the quality objectives have also been made more detailed. They are to be consistent with the quality policy, measurable if practicable, monitored, communicated and updated as appropriate. They have to be established at relevant functions and levels. Clause 6 puts a greater emphasis on the organization's planning, which is integral to the business. Auditors should be familiar with the risk, the consequences of an event, and the associated likelihood of occurrence, and how to avoid, eliminate, minimize, or mitigate it. They also need to focus on the positive aspect, opportunities for the business, and how to optimize them. The risks and opportunities identified will lead to policies and objectives. Auditors should be able to identify and follow a clear path from issues and requirements through risks and opportunities, policies and objectives. Clause 6 has three sub-clauses, which are 6.1, actions to address risks and opportunities, 6.2, quality objectives and planning to achieve them, 6.3, planning of changes. Let's start with the sub-clause 6.1, actions to address risks and opportunities. The sub-clause 6.1.1 states that when planning for the quality management system, the organization is required to consider the issues referred to in sub-clause 4.1 and the requirements referred to in sub-clause 4.2 and determine the risks and opportunities that need to be addressed to give assurance that the quality management system can achieve its intended results. The subclause 6.1.1 specifies that when planning for the quality management system, the organization is required to determine the risks and opportunities that need to be addressed to enhance desirable effects and to prevent or reduce undesired effects. As per this subclause 6.1.1, Organization must determine the risks and opportunities that need to be addressed to achieve improvement. Coming to the subclause 6.1.2, the subclause 6.1.2 of the ISO 9001 says that the organization is required to plan actions to address these risks and opportunities. 
The clause also specifies that organization is required to plan actions to address how to integrate and implement the actions into its quality management system processes and to evaluate the effectiveness of these actions. Quality management system processes are explained under subclause 4.4 of the standard. According to this subclause, actions taken to address risks and opportunities must be proportionate to the potential impact on the conformity of products and services. Subclause 6.1.2 under note 1 states that options to address risks can include avoiding risk, taking risk in order to pursue an opportunity, eliminating the risk source, changing the likelihood or consequences, sharing the risk or retaining risk by informed decision. Further, under note 2, this subclause says that opportunities can lead to the adoption of new practices, launching new products, opening new markets, addressing new customers, building partnerships, using new technology and other desirable, viable possibilities to address the organization's or its customers' needs. Let's talk about the subclause 6.2, quality objectives and planning to achieve them. The subclause 6.2.1 of the standard says that the organization is required to establish quality objectives at relevant functions, levels and processes needed for the quality management system. As per this subclause 6.2.1, the quality objectives must be consistent with the quality policy. It must be measurable and organization must take applicable requirements into account. Subclause 6.2.1 states that quality objectives must be relevant to conformity of products and services and to enhancement of customer satisfaction. As per this clause, quality objectives must be monitored and communicated to concerned people. The organization is also required to ensure that quality objectives are updated as appropriate. Lastly, this subclause 6.2.1 states that the organization is required to maintain documented information on the quality objectives. Coming to subclause 6.2.2 now. This subclause says that when planning how to achieve its quality objectives, the organization is required to determine what will be done, what resources will be required, who will be responsible, when it will be completed, and how the results will be evaluated. Let's talk about Clause 6.3, Planning of Changes. The subclause 6.3 of ISO 9001 states that when the organization determines the need for changes to the quality management system, the changes are required to be carried out in a planned manner. According to this subclause 6.3, the organization is required to consider the purpose of the changes and their potential consequences and the integrity of the quality management system. Clause says that organization must consider the availability of resources and the allocation or reallocation of responsibilities and authorities to meet out the requirements of the standard. Friends, we just finished discussing Clause 6 of ISO 9001-2015. I sincerely thank you all for your interest and attention. Thank you and best wishes.